Hey Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mock. Welcome to Foot of Eagles Now. Happy Monday! There's a lot of actual legit Eagles news and rumors coming up here in today's video. First though, are you following both, both Trace and myself on Twitter? Because obviously Trace produces the show and I host the show. We want you guys to follow us on Twitter. If you're following both of us, type not lame down below in the comment section. So if you need to follow us, you see these Twitter accounts on your screen right now. Go give us a follow right now to stay up to date the latest Eagles news and rumors on your Twitter feed. Uh, let's jump into the latest, again, Eagles news and rumors, as we always say here on a Monday. You know, there are a lot of times that we get into stuff that is just rumor. It's like, well, this might happen. Maybe here's how it could happen. And then there are days like today where we start with actual hard evidence and hard reporting on Philadelphia being connected to Stefan Gilmore. Yes, we've talked about this in the past. You remember Stefan Gilmore's wife tweeted that the Eagles had called them about potentially becoming a Philadelphia Eagle, you know, fighting with the team as a cornerback. Nothing really happened with that a couple of weeks ago. Well, now ESPN's Jeremy Fowler is saying that the the Eagles have serious interest in signing Gilmore to be the other corner opposite of Darius Slay on this defense. Now, one of the reasons why Gilmore remains unsigned, despite the fact being a very good cornerback, is that he'll be 31 years old this season. I mean, 32, 33, about the course of a two or three year deal. That's old right now in the NFL. And with a very strong cornerback class in the NFL draft, his market value probably has dropped a lot more than he originally thought. Now, the question is, are the Eagles prepared to shell out money for Gilmore? Because even though he is on the wrong set of 30, you're still looking at 10 plus million dollars a year for a starting corner. Back. Now, they're already paying way more than that for Darius Slay, and so do you want to just add on to the payroll overall and bring in Gilmore? That's the question High Roseman and company have to go ahead and answer. Here is Jeremy Fowler on the Gilmore rumors this weekend on ESPN. Quote, Kansas City Chiefs have done their homework on him. There's interest there. Philadelphia Eagles need a starting cornerback. There's belief be belief to be interest on him or on the league with the Eagles. There's some other wildcard teams, Buffalo Bills. They're looking at some starting cornerbacks help. He played there as a rookie. Maybe there's a reunion in the works potentially, but nothing really cooking right now. He also, like Tyron Matthew, willing to take his time if he has to, end quote. So, willing to take his time. You see Kansas City and the Bills mentioned alongside Philadelphia as two potential areas where he, you know, there three potential teams really and go ahead and sign Gilmore. Again, there's nothing against Stefan Gilmore, and I've been a Stefan Gilmore proponent on this channel ever since he became a free agent. I listed him a lot of times in my free agency outlook, my free agency, you know, free agency sign video that we've done here on the channel. The problem is age, and the question really is going to be, do you want to spend a lot of money on a guy who at most will be here for three more years versus a rookie cornerback who could be here for an extended period of time? Here's my thought, though. Right now, they, they need a starting cornerback opposite of Darius Slate. That's obvious. If they don't think Derek Stingley or Ahmad Gardner will fall to 15 over overall, then sign Stephon Gilmore. But if you think that they can fall and you want to take that risk, then just wait and get a rookie cornerback. I think that's kind of the dilemma right now that High Roseman has, and I'm fine with either one. You know, I prefer rookies over expensive veterans because rookies are on cheaper deals, and maybe they can become better than Stephon Gilmore, but I'm definitely not against signing Gilmore because him and Darius Slay, at least in the short term, could be one of the best, you know, elite duo or cornerback duos in the National Football League. Now, there is some rumblings that Zach McPherson, of course, the rookie drafted last year out of Texas Tech, is in line to potentially win the starting job if Philadelphia does not address the cornerback spot. I'm a McPherson guy, you know, I like him, but he's got to be really ready because whenever you play opposite of Darius Slay, you're going to get picked on a lot, especially if you're a young cornerback in year two. Um, add right pin comment down below. How interested are you in Gilmore? Are you like, oh my gosh, they got to go get him. Like, you have to get this guy. Or are you kind of like, hey, you know, I wouldn't hate it. Like, this is a fine signing, but there's also some draft players that we really like as well. Let me know where you're at on a scale of one to 10 down below right now. All right, speaking of trade stuff, we talk about trade stuff all the time here on the channel. The DK Metcalf trade stuff has gotten crazier and crazier. So you remember there was a report a couple of weeks ago saying that DK is going to stay in Seattle and the Seahawks have no interest in trading him. And that kind of all, you know, killed the idea that Philadelphia could right the wrong of J.J. Ethereum Whiteside instead of DK Metcalf. Well, there is a new report saying that the, the, uh, the uh, Seattle Seahawks could trade Metcalf for, quote, the right price. And that would mean the question is, what is the right price? And I think any player besides, like, you know, the greats in the league, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, could be had for the right price. Now, again, Metcalf was seemingly staying in, Philadelphia, in uh, Seattle. Could he go to Philadelphia? That is the question. My big question, though, is how much would he cost? And would he cost as much as Tyreek Hill? Because Tyreek Hill reset the star wide receiver trade market, as we'll see, with his trade to the, um, the Miami Dolphins. 
Now, if we go ahead and get into that, one quick reminder to subscribe to our channel. We're approaching 27 subs here on Philadelphia Eagles now. We're at 26,781. If you're a, type, a part of our Eagles uh, YouTube squad, go down below and type squad if you are subscribed. If not, subscribe, then type squad in the comment section. Now, Metcalf is a fantastic player. I love DK Metcalf. But Metcalf is one of those guys who is still extremely young, has tremendous upside, and has proven to be an elite catcher of the football on the outside. And really, I mean, one of the most dominant receivers that's in the game right now just due to his physical nature and speed uh, that is an incredible combination. My big question mark is what will it cost to get him? Because I saw on Twitter today, Elliot Shore Parks on Twitter from 94.1 WIP said, trade whatever it would take. I wouldn't trade whatever it would take. You got to make sure it's a team friendly deal. Look what Tyreek Hill cost. I know you're going to say, Thomas, Tyreek Hill is way better and you know way more expensive than DK Metcalf. Is he? Are you sure? What if it was even half of this? Look at this haul. They got a 2022 first, a 2022 second, a 2022 fourth, a 2023 fourth, and a 2023 sixth front. Five draft picks to get this guy. Now, Hill, again, worth it. Fantastic. Top three receiver in the league. Metcalf, probably a top 10, top five receiver in the league. But if you're going to tell me that's what it would cost, I'm all out on it. Like, I'm all out on it. Now, if it's one first round draft pick, we can talk. But if it's multiple, you know, early picks in the NFL draft, just get two wide receivers in the draft. Like, 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 we just keep forgetting, and again, this goes back to Stephon Gilmore, it goes DK Metcalf, goes to Tyron Matthew. Philadelphia has the most draft ammo of any team in recent NFL history. Like, they have, most teams, like, at most will have two first-round draft picks. Philly has three. Like, three first-round draft picks. You can literally do whatever you want and get three instant starters in the first round, throw in a second-round draft pick. That's four instant starters, like, ready-to-rock instant starters. And you could spend two of those on wide receivers, and there are elite receivers in this draft. So Metcalf, again, they trade for him today. You give you number 19 overall. I would say great, great addition. Him, the size, the speed alongside Smith, fantastic. But if you don't get him, it's not the end of the world. Just take Drake London or take Jamison Williams or take Chris Olave or Garrett Wilson and then take another receiver in round two if you think it's that important to go ahead and add some diversity to the outside of your wide receiver portfolio, if you will. So again, nothing against Metcalf. I have no issue with Matt, with, 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 with training for Metcalf. But much like a lot of these guys we talked about, don't give up the sun, moon, and stars to get one player when you can get a lot of great players in the draft because the next DK Metcalf is going to be coming up in the NFL draft and it might just be this season. What do you guys think? Draft a wide receiver or trade for Metcalf? Type D down below for draft or type T down below for trade. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Now, speaking of those draft players, they will be wearing this exact draft hat on draft night. And you guys know how excited I am for the NFL draft April 28th, which is 24 days away. It's insane. We're already at April 4th right now. My like, gosh. Pick up the official draft hat right now. Chatsports.com forward slash Eagles hat. You can pick that up and uh, get the right size, the right shape. Where you want a flat bill? You want a baseball cap, whether you want a snapback, whatever you guys want, it's all down below in the link in the description box. Pick up your draft hat right now. Final thoughts here, quick th update on the NFL draft. There are new reports suggesting that Kayvon Thibodeau, the star pass rusher, seemingly the number one or two best pass rusher in this draft, could fall out of the top 10. I saw this on Twitter. I'm looking into it. And, and there are people that legit think that Thibodeau, who would very much be an Eagles target if he were available, might actually be available. So Jordan Reed wrote a co-article on ESPN Plus about Kayvon Thibodeau. I'll throw it up on your screen right now. Quote, the Lions or Texans could take Thibodeau at number two or three. But the word from sources in the league is that Thibodeau is expected to be drafted outside the top five picks and could even be selected outside the top 10. Look at the draft order. If the Seahawks, number nine, and Jets, number 10, don't select Thibodeau, he could slide further, as Washington, Minnesota, Houston, and Baltimore are not expected to select pass rusher at picks 11 through 14. A lot can change once the draft starts and panic sets in, but one month out, it's not unrealistic to think Thibodeau could be on the board for the Eagles at number 15. I love this. I mean, I hope this happens. And honestly, you can see this happening because, you know, people start to get kind of overhyped on receiver and overhyped on quarterback, and you blink, and you know, Thibodeau's available at 8, and then 9, and then 10. And then it's, like you said, you know, all these, these teams, Minnesota, Houston, Baltimore don't need pass rushers because they signed them all this offseason. If he's there at 15, you take him over anybody else. Like, you take him over Derek Stingley. You take him over Garrett Wilson. You take him over Drake London. You take him over Devin Lloyd. I love Devin Lloyd. This is, uh, I mean, a huge need for Philadelphia. And you get a young star pass rusher like Thibodeau, pair him up with, you know, Hassan. Reddick and Ben Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham and Josh Sweat would be fantastic. So I'm all for this. What actually happened? Mm, I don't think so. But if it did, I mean, come on, this would be fantastic for Philadelphia. Um, one more time, make sure you guys are following Trace and myself on Twitter. Type not lane if you are. We should be getting a ton of new followers today. You guys got to go follow us on Twitter. I mean, myself and Trace tweet a ton of Eagle stuff. It's a great place and a great follow to have if you want to stay up to date on the latest Eagles news. Our ultimate day on our Eagles news rumor video. I am Thomas Mott. Mailbag video coming up later on this week. Hashtag Eagles. If you want to get your question in right now, of course, be a subscriber to be a part of that. Again, for the channel, Thomas Mott signing off for the rest of your day.